In this video, we're going to discuss procedures and considerations for in vitro bioluminescence imaging on the IVIS platform. Production of bioluminescent light occurs when, for instance, firefly luciferase engineered into cells enzymatically catalyzes the chemical degradation of its injected target substrate, deluciferin, in the presence of ADP and oxygen, thereby serving as an excellent readout of living viable cellular or genetic activity. The sensitivity, ease of use, and flexibility of these luciferase reporters in conjunction with the ultra-sensitive IVIS systems have expanded the reach of in vivo bioluminescence imaging in various applications including oncology, stem cell research, and infectious diseases, just to name a few. But prior to imaging non-invasively in vivo, we recommend validating and assessing your optical activity in an in vitro setting. Some key questions that will be answered in the video are. 1. What is an optimal luciferase reporter to label my cells with? 2. How do I label my cells with these luciferase reporters? And finally. 3. How do I assess my transfection labeling efficiency in vitro prior to detecting these cells and living subjects? So let's address the first question. What luciferase reporter should I label my cells with? Firefly luciferase is the most widely utilized luciferase reporter in the field because its emission falls within the optimal imaging window outside of peak hemoglobin absorption wavelengths. Other luciferases like Ranilla and Gaussia have been utilized successfully by many researchers. Deluciferin is a substrate for firefly luciferase while Cilentrazine is a substrate for Ranilla and Gaussia luciferases. Revity offers high-quality luciferin which can be ordered online. In this video, we will focus on bioluminescence imaging with mainly firefly luciferase, but these strategies can be translated to other reporters. So how do I label my cells with these luciferase reporters? Stable transfection using lentiviral vectors is a preferred method for labeling cells with luciferases. One can purchase a luciferase plasmid from various commercial vendors, design a lentiviral delivery system, and use conventional molecular biology techniques to efficiently transduce their cells with these proteins. Alternatively, you can now purchase lentiviral particles encoding redshifted luciferases to generate your own stably transfected cells. These lentiviral transfection kits can be ordered through our website. In addition, Revity has a variety of luciferase expressing cancer cell lines, some of which are also dual labeled with fluorescent proteins. A list of these cells can also be found on our website. Once you have stably transfected your cells with luciferase, how do you assess transfection efficiency and light output from your cells by imaging in vitro? We start by adding 1 million cells in 100 microliters of media to the first well of the black well plate. We will now create serial dilutions of our cells and complete media at a 1 to 2 ratio. Remove 100 microliters of each set of dilutions and add it to a series of wells on the plate. You can dilute down to any desired concentration to determine the lower limits of detection of your cells. Remember to include media-only controls and a well containing unlabeled cells. It is highly recommended to use black weld plates for all procedures in the IVIS. White and clear plates can cause many issues with bioluminescent or fluorescent reporters, including autoluminescence, autofluorescence, reflection, and contamination of neighboring wells. Prior to imaging these wells, add 100 microliters of deluciferin substrate to each set of wells. Deluciferin is added at a concentration of 150 micrograms per mil. Incubate for 5 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius. We're now ready to image. Start by launching the living image software from the desktop. You will be prompted to create or choose a user ID. Then initialize the system. The system will perform a series of quality control checks and begin cooling the camera to its target temperature of minus 90 degrees Celsius. The status bar at the bottom of the control panel will change from red to green when the system is ready to utilize. Furthermore, during initialization and imaging the status light on the instrument will change from green to red indicating that the system is in use. Do not try to open the door while the status light is red. Select the folder you would like to save your images to. From the top menu bar, select Acquisition and then Auto Save to. Choose the field of view. A is the smallest. Now open the system door and place plates into the IVIS. Let's briefly discuss the acquisition control panel for bioluminescence imaging. 
There are three parameters that one can adjust for bioluminescence imaging sensitivity, exposure time, f-stop, and binning. We'll discuss each of these briefly. Exposure time is simply the length of the image acquisition, controlling how long the shutter remains open. Minimum settings for exposure time are 0.5 seconds and maximum is 5 minutes. The f-stop is simply the aperture. For bioluminescence imaging, the default f-stop is typically 1 which means the aperture is completely open to collect all signal, thereby the most sensitive of the f-stop settings. If the signal intensity is too high, one can always decrease the aperture size by increasing the f number to 2, 4, or 8. Increasing the f number makes the aperture smaller and decreases sensitivity. Binning is the last of the sensitivity settings. It is simply grouping pixels together to enhance sensitivity. By default, binning is set at medium which is 8 by 8 pixels, but one can always adjust binning to enhance sensitivity to a large binning setting which is 16 by 16 pixels, or conversely enhance resolution at a small binning setting at 4 by 4. Just remember that the resolution is inversely proportional to sensitivity. Although you may choose to adjust the settings manually, a convenient auto setting is available that would choose optimal imaging settings for your particular acquisition. To access this feature, scroll down using the gray arrows beside the exposure time window. This tool safeguards against saturation or underexposure by automatically adjusting the exposure time, binning, and f-stop based on an initial reading of signal intensity. We highly recommend that you use this feature. Because changes in these settings are normalized for in the final calibrated unit, we encourage you to adjust these parameters throughout the course of the experiment. Now let's image our plate. We have chosen our field of view and auto settings so we can begin by simply clicking Acquire. After clicking Acquire, the Edit Image Labels window will appear and prompt you to enter specific identifiers for the experiment at hand. It is recommended that you thoroughly label your image to facilitate searching, sorting, and loading data for analysis. First, the system will take a photographic image of the plate. The LED that enables this photographic mode then turns off and the system returns to a light-tight environment before starting collection of emitted light from our plated cells. The system has now completed the acquisition of our plated cells. What you see in this image is a photon density map of the light output from the cells overlaid onto the photographic image of the plate. We're now ready to quantify our signal to assess the optical activity of our cells. Before starting with the analysis and the image we just collected, let's take a quick look at tools needed for analysis adjustments and organization of your data in the living image software, namely the image window, the toolbar located along the upper left-hand portion of the main software window, and the tool palette located on the right margin of the main software window. Let's start with the image window. It can be placed anywhere within the living image workspace or expanded to encompass the entire space. This is where your raw image data is viewed as an overlay of a black and white photo with the bioluminescent signal. Each image window has its own unique image or click number that you can see in the header bar in the upper left-hand portion of the window. This number consists of the user ID followed by a date timestamp for single image acquisitions. Important acquisition and identification labels can be visualized by selecting the appropriate button or pull down from within the window itself. For example, click on the info button to display acquisition parameters, the date and time the image was acquired, and other important user-defined information that you entered in the image labels window at the time of acquisition. You can add or edit the image labels by clicking this icon in the toolbar. The toolbar also contains shortcut icons for frequently accessed functions such as open, browse, save, and copy-paste. The tool palette houses all tools needed for adjustment of visualization and quantification of your data. Please note, the options available in the tool palette depend on the type of active image data. Only applicable tools will be shown for a basic bioluminescent image like the one we just acquired. The tool palette consists of three tabs. Image Adjust, ROI or Region of Interest Tools, and Corrections. Within Image Adjust, you can change the image display according to your preferences such as optical source, color table, scale bar min and max, photographic brightness and contrast, and zoom just to name a few. One important note is that any adjustment to the image via the Image Adjust tab does not change the quantitative output. 
Next, the ROI Tools tab has a number of shapes that allow you to select a region of interest, quantify the intensity, and export your data. Finally, the Corrections tab shows various corrections that have been applied to the image to improve quality and minimize background. These corrections should generally not be changed. Now that we've become familiar with the major analysis components in the Living Image software, let's discuss how to analyze the image data that we just acquired. The first thing you'll want to do is make sure that the max light output from the sources that you wish to analyze, the individual wells in the plate in our case, are within the linear range of the CCD, 600 to 60,000 raw counts, which is where quantitation is most consistent. Please know we reach saturation shortly beyond 60,000 counts and the data acquisition would need to be repeated if this occurs. One simple way to confirm that you're within this range is to open the image adjust tab on the tool palette and type in 600 as the color scale minimum. This will change our display to show only pixels that contain count values greater than 600 counts. Any wells with ROIs measuring outside of the 600 to 60,000 count range should not be included in our quantitative analysis. Counts is the default unit you will see after a bioluminescent image capture and is a raw unit. It's a great indicator of image quality. Counts will answer the question, do I have enough signal for accurate quantification? To compare datasets, we must account for acquisition adjustments, including exposure time, f-stop, binning and field of view. The calibrated unit of radiance is photons per second per centimeter squared per steradian. Radiance accounts for these changes in acquisition parameters and normalizes images for comparison. Two images taken with different exposure times, f-stops, or binnings can still be compared to one another if the units are converted to radiance. Therefore, before getting your measurements, switch to radiance from the unit's drop-down box. In other words, remember counts is for ensuring quality at the time of acquisition, radiances is for quantitative comparison during analysis. Now let's define a region of interest using the available tools in the tool palette. To do this, expand the ROI Tools tab. Then select an ROI shape that is appropriate for the image you'll be analyzing. For well plates, the Grid ROI tool allows you to select from several common plate formats. Then use the handles at the corners of the ROI to appropriately resize the grid so that fits over the image of the plate. If the plate is not straight, we can rotate the ROI by right-clicking the corner of the ROI. Toggle the cursor tool to rotate and adjust it appropriately. Now that our grid ROI is drawn and properly placed. Let's have a look at the quantitative data associated with our image. Click on the Measure ROI button in the ROI Tools tab as shown here. The ROI Measurements window will pop up. To see the quantitative data, be sure that Radiance is selected under the Measurements Types pull-down menu in the lower left-hand corner of the ROI Measurements window. Click on the Grid ROI Measurements tab. Your quantitative data will now be visible and displayed in a grid format that matches the image in the image window. To export the data, click on a Select All and Copy in the lower right-hand corner of the ROI Measurements window. The data is now copied to the clipboard on your computer and can be easily pasted into Excel or any spreadsheet application where you can quickly plot the total flux or photons per second for each well versus the cell concentration. The slope, photons per second per cell, provides important guidance as to the sensitivity of the cell line you will be working with. Different cell lines can have dramatically different total flux per cell. Certainly, the total light output will dictate the overall sensitivity. In other words, it will answer the questions, how early in the study can my cells be detected? Or, what's the smallest number of visible cells? Those cells that produce fewer photons per second will require higher cell numbers and will take longer to detect. Furthermore, accurate quantitation over long periods of time or between studies using different cell stock or passages should be tested to control the light output remains consistent. The number of passages and especially the number of freeze-thaw cycles can affect the average photons per second per cell. For this reason, it's recommended to routinely perform in vitro characterization of your cells. Our in vitro analyses have provided us important insights into strategies for cell labeling and evaluation of transfection efficiency. When transfecting cells for the first time please ensure that you repeat this procedure a few times a week to assess the stability of expression over an extended duration of time. 
also ensure that you test their growth and viability and directly compare to the parental strain to elucidate the impact of any transfection on cells. Furthermore, such in vitro assessments of light output in transfected cells also offers valuable information on stability of light activity and potential in vivo sensitivity before you move into imaging live animals. Once these preliminary characterization studies are complete, you're now ready to move into the in vivo phase of your work to assess biological activity of your cells in live animals. Please do not hesitate to contact your local Revity application scientist if you require further assistance or have further questions. Thank you.